It was unfortunate, and well, ironic that my grandfather passed around Halloween time. Grandpa always hated October for some reason. All the fun my family had was now stricken by grief, especially Grandma. She took it the hardest. Grandpa had just got to that age where his body had gave out, and Grandma found him dead laying in his rocking chair. Although Grandma told us that they were supposed to be out to eat that night, but Grandpa refused to and was acting weird. I remember the night very vividly. It was late. Grandma had found Grandpa. She called my mother, who in turn called me, and we both drove down to Grandma's house, which took a bit as the apartment I live at is a while away from their house. Now, I never really had much of a relationship with Grandpa. From when I was a child up to now, Grandpa would just sit in his rocking chair and not say a word to me or my siblings, maybe an occasional, hey Joseph, or get me a coffee, so I never really knew much about him besides from the stories from Grandma. Anyways, besides from the background info, let's get into what really concerned me. After all the grieving and the funeral, it was time to figure out where all his stuff was going, which to note there wasn't a lot, so I found myself spending afternoons after work going to Grandma's house and helping her go through stuff. On this particular afternoon, the sky was orange, and looking out the window, you could see all the brown leaves of fall. Grandma had tasked me with going through Grandpa's closet, which sat quietly in the corner of his dark room, while she went to church. I agreed, of course, and as Grandma left for church, I went to work, pulling out old boxes out of the closet, mostly filled with old clothes and items. Most of the boxes there looked like they hadn't been touched for years. I must admit sitting there alone in my Grandma's old creaky house filled with Halloween decorations, looking through the clothes of a dead man, did feel a bit eerie, but I carried on box after box until I reached the top shelf. All of the things up there looked even older and dustier than the rest. I assume it's because I doubt Grandma or Grandpa could reach up there at their old age. Clearing away the boxes, I found something very odd at the back. A small door. Well, it was less of a door and more of a knob on the wall with a noticeable square around it. Of course, me being a nosy guy, I opened it. I don't know if it was supposed to be locked or not but after three hard pulls, it opened right up. Inside was a small space. Looking around it I saw a cobweb in the corner and at the very back I saw it. Laying there was a cross, a bible, and a photo book. I pulled all three of them out and laid them on the floor for a closer examination. Why were these hidden away from all his other stuff? I kept thinking to myself. It intrigued me. Nothing was out of the ordinary with the bible and the cross but the photo book was different. It was badly torn and looked like the spine of the book was hanging on by a thread, but the part that really stood out to me was that on the front written in marker it said this house is haunted. Opening it up the first thing that was in there was a piece of old brown paper that was put in there that an entry was written on. I started to read it. October 2nd, 1968. I have recently moved in with Barbara and I'm very happy although this house is torturing me. Barbara and I thought this would be the perfect place to live and it was, until these things started to happen. I was awoken from my sleep last night to loud pounding coming from the hallway. I was the only one awake though. Barbara was still sleeping, and it seemed like she didn't hear anything. I decided not to wake her. I slowly approached the door of our bedroom and put my ear up to it. I could still hear the pounding, and it was getting louder and louder. I couldn't take it anymore. I swung open the door, and just as fast, as I did that I saw the bathroom door across from our room swing open and hit the wall with a loud bang. Then all the tension dropped and it went silent. I kind of stood there for a second shaking. Then kind of without thinking I walked back into our room, took the camera off the shelf and took a picture of the open door. Needless to say, I didn't go back to sleep last night and the Bible didn't leave my hands. I don't know what's wrong with this house, but anything else happens I'm putting it in this book. I'm not going to tell Barbara about this. My grandma's name was Barbara. This was my grandfather's writing. On the next page over was the picture he was referring to. It was a Polaroid picture, dark and grainy, but I could make out a hallway and an open door. I looked from the book and looked out the open door of my grandfather's room and saw the bathroom across the hallway. I lifted up the book and put it side by side with the doorway. This was taken here. Chills ran down my spine, now feeling a sense of fear I didn't feel before. Flipping the page, I saw many other photos of dark hallways and open doors. I then went on to the next piece of paper in the book. October 10, 1968. I told the priest about what happened a few nights ago. He told me to put up more crosses and that I might have evil spirits in my house. 
but oh god, it only made it worse. Barbara went out with her friends yesterday. While she was gone, I tried to lay down, but when I lifted up the covers, there was a bloody goat head laying there. I almost threw up. I had to quickly dispose of it before Barbara got home. Bless her heart. It was starting to dark outside, and I admit, I was getting a little freaked out, but nothing as bad as what was coming on the next page. October 16th, 1968. I can't do this anymore. I can't even remember the last time I had a good night's sleep. And Barbara hasn't noticed anything out of the ordinary. Am I going crazy? Todd, I don't know what I did to deserve this. I can't even go outside or go to work without feeling like I'm being watched. The worst happened last night. I went to the bathroom while Barbara was asleep. I had the camera on me. I always have the camera on me now. As I was sitting there, something started to slide their finger across the door making the most terrible sound and the thing started speaking. It had the worst high-pitched voice I had ever heard. It kept saying, Eugene, I know you're in there. Open up, I didn't move for the next two hours, until it stopped. When it finally did, I walked up and opened the door with my sweaty palms. I cracked the door, and there it was, staring at me. Its skin was completely black and had no nose. His eyes were hollow with white dots, and the worst part, his huge teethy smile. I pulled my camera and took a picture and slammed the door. I didn't leave the bathroom till the morning. I told Barbara I just fell asleep in there. I hope I never see that thing again. There was a picture next to Paige, and it was exactly what he described it as. Looking at the picture, I started to sweat a bit. The next page, there must have been over 10 pictures of this thing. Some of them were in dark hallways. One was taken from the living room window looking out into the forest, where you could see the thing's big smile. I flipped to the last page where the final entry was. October 20th, 1968. This demon has haunted me. It has tortured every second of my life. I've tried to keep it together for Barbara, but I just can't anymore. I'm filled with anger and fear, and I've gotten no sleep. I pray to God every night, but obviously he doesn't answer. I'm pacing back and forth in the living room right now. Barbara is asleep. I just walked by the staircase, and a door has appeared under the stairs. This was never here before, and I hear the voice of the demon coming from inside it's beckoning me to come inside. I'm going in. I don't know why, but it's my only option. I can't live like this. I walked in there. It was so dark. If it wasn't for the flashlight I brought with me, I couldn't see a thing. Looking at the ground, it's stone. I was in some sort of cave. I knew I wasn't alone though. I kept hearing all kinds of things. Water dripping, footsteps, and a terrible scratching. I continued like this for what felt like hours, just walking through the pitch black cave. Each step I made creating an echo. Soon I was stopped. I was stopped by the demon that had been making my life a living hell. He was standing in front of me, giving me that awful smile. In the fit of the moment I yelled what do you want from me? He stood there for a second, and then said in his high pitched voice I want you Eugene. Let me in, let me in, let me in every time it spoke. It got louder and louder until he was practically screaming at me, let me in, let me in. In a fit of fear, I threw my flashlight at it, hearing a large shattering sound. As I did so, and everything going dark, I immediately stumbled to bring out my cross and started to repeat, Lord Jesus, you are the highest authority and there is no spiritual power above you. Therefore, I hide in you, as you are my safe shelter. I'm confident that in submitting to you, no evil will ever be able to conquer me. Therefore, in your name, I trust you to send your messengers and protect me wherever I go. As I said this, the thing started to scream, almost completely draining out what I was saying. But just like that he screamed, you'll see me again, Eugene. And everything went black. I woke up sitting in the hallway by the stairs. It was still dark, and I could see the moon through the window, the doorway under the stairs, was gone, but in its place, something had written on the wall in red October 2nd, 2023. I took a picture of it. November 1st, 1968. There has been no more problems ever since that night. I've actually gotten sleep and feel way better. Barbara has actually started to make me laugh again. Although that date, I don't know what it means. I am just going to forget about it though. I've decided that it would be best for me not to tell Barbara and I'm going to hide this book somewhere and just forget about this whole thing. Looking over, I saw the picture that Grandpa was speaking about. It was writing on the wall that said October 2nd, 2023. Looking at it for a second, I froze and dropped the book on the ground. October 2nd, 2023. That's the day Grandpa died.